This week, we're practicing writing methods by building sorting algorithms, and the first one we're going to build is bubble sort. The problem that we're going to use to study both writing methods and runtime analysis is the sorting problem. In this problem, you're given an array of objects that are in random order, and your code has to rearrange them to be in increasing order. It turns out that there are a lot of different algorithms for how to solve this problem, and they have different theoretical runtimes. This is the loop that we studied in the last video. The thing we concluded was that no matter what order the array starts in, at the end of this loop, the biggest thing will be in the last position of the array. That's the first step toward getting things sorted. We can build on this. Bubble sort builds on that idea and just does that loop n minus one times. The first time puts the biggest thing in place, the second time puts the next biggest thing in place, and so on. This is a visual representation of an array where the positions of the array go left to right and they put a vertical bar to show how big the number in that position is. When the algorithm is running, you can see pink rectangles around the two positions that are being compared. And when they are out of order, you can see they put one in the temp variable and put it the other back, so they're doing the swap the way that we coded the swap. So this is the end of the first time through the loop and it's gotten the biggest thing into the last position. Let's speed things up a bit. This is the end of the second time through the outer loop, and now two things are in order. I think we can let it go even faster now. There's one thing that's different about the behavior of that animation and our code. The animation is smart enough to stop later loops before they walk into the positions that have already been put into place, where ours will go to the end of the array each time through the loop. Let's ignore that for now. Instead, let's clean up our code a bit. Our code isn't really easy to read. We can make it better by naming the code that swaps two elements of the array we can pull that code out into a method that has three parameters, the array, and the two positions that we want to swap. That makes our code a bit more readable. For the runtime analysis, the thing that's going to happen most often is the condition of the inside loop. And in the last video, we figured out that that statement happens n times every time that loop runs. When we put this loop around it, it makes the inner loop run n minus 1 times. That means that the condition of the inner loop will be executed n minus 1 times n times. The theoretical runtime of bubble sort is n minus 1 times n, which is n squared minus n. That is big O of n squared. Notice that the big O notation drops all of the lower order terms. The growth of that function as n gets larger is controlled almost entirely by the n squared. Think about the difference in how many times that statement runs if the size of the input goes from 1,000 to 1,001. 
That extra space in the array causes the statement to execute 2,000 more times. The bulk of that change is caused by the n squared term. So that's the term that we say defines the runtime. That's why we can ignore the lower order terms and constants. At this point, it's important to point out that the runtime analysis in this video differs from the one in the book by a little bit. The book has an off by one error when it is deriving the runtime. But since we dropped the lower order terms, the end result is the same. The runtime of bubble sort is big O of n squared.